Right, very small video. I've arrived at Sanford near the there's the Nelson Arms and then there's this pub here. I've forgotten what it's called already. Anyway, here we are folks. We haven't been over here for quite a few months now. Mainly did this walk in the winter. And today we're not going as far as Velvet Bottom because I'm leaving Velvet Bottom for when I can next go to Cheddar because I want to explore the trail over there more. So I said to myself, don't do it all in one go now, you don't need to. Just do your two springs walk, which is first of all we, get, we skirt the hill fort, then we go up and we have views of Burnton Coombe. We're going that way. Then we're going to climb up to the trig point. It's basically the hottest day of the year today, by the way. It could reach 30. And then we come from the trig point. We're coming back down through Robera Warren, along by the stream. And then we'll be walking back this way. Or we might go through the wood. I haven't decided yet. So I think it's going to be anything between six and eight hours. And there's no panic. We just kicked off at 11, although I left home about half uh, 10. Um, that was straightforward. There was no big traffic at Banwell. And uh, this is the busy A38, by, by the way, this one. The A38. But like I said, when I came through Banwell, if I'd been an hour earlier, it would have been very busy. Because I think the kids are still at school at the moment. Um, the kids are still at school, so that means that the roads are quite busy. Right, I've got plenty of fluids. I've got a half a bottle of juice I'm going to drink now when I get up here. Then I've got. I got after that. Three bottles of water and you're, I'm going to need them today and another juice. Uh, picnic I've got quavers which are light, cheeselets, two pieces of cheese, some cake, what will be a melted Kit Kat and there's bound to be something else but I can't think what it is um, but I'm like I said I don't plan to eat anything yet look at this lovely hedgerow here right I'm just gonna I've just done this on purpose so you can see I'm actually at Churchill on the A38 it's Churchill over and out. To Sheila. It's 25 past 11. We're probably later starting off than usual, probably by half an hour. But I left later all day and I don't, I'm expecting to be gone at least six hours, if not more. Loaded up as usual. Now in this past week I've already done two big hikes. I did a big pretty circular. I did of um, East Quantox Head Circular and I did, I had a shorter walk yesterday over to Sand Bay because I hadn't been over there since the first 6th of June so I decided to go to Sand Bay for just a, a usual stroll over there and so today on the 19th of July 2024 people who know my walks will know where I am and of course you will know if you listen to video one. Some of the stuff gets edited out because I'm doing, it is like a diary. I do keep my own copies, but I, there is an edited version as well. Some people used to write diaries. I do visual journals, visual diaries, reflective journals, reflective diaries. I ramble on. And people think, oh, not another one of Sheila's tough rambling. But it's a different day. 
And I've got different news. I don't think I've mentioned that there was an assassination attempt on Pres President Trump over the last week. The fact that he just turned his head at the right time and it just caught his ear. And the bloke was shot dead. He was a 20-year-old. And he'd managed to get onto a roof. So then the, the, the head of the security is now almost under house arrest, to be quite honest. Because if President Trump had just moved his head again, he would have been dead. He would have been shot straight through the head. But he's been up again chatting. President Biden, who's the president at the moment, don't forget they're both standing for election, is got COVID. He's 81 and people are making him feel old, I think. They're putting a lot of pressure on him. And I think it's very ageist, really. Do you know what I mean? I think it is. Because he all right, he's got COVID now. And he's a bit doddery. But that shouldn't really... They shouldn't really be going on that. I don't think so. They want one of their others to stand in his place at the next presidential election. He's considering it now because he's got COVID, they say. It's probably a good way of him to bow out. They said, look, we'll just say you've got COVID and uh, you, you won't be in any sort of position of thinking you're going senile or anything. So although I'm repeating this walk, different things have happened in the world. President Zelensky's in this country at the moment talking to the new Prime Minister, Starmer, about his issues with Russia and what they want to do. He wants to be able to bomb Russia more. But I don't think people really want to do that because that is opening up a chance for us to be bombed. Um, you know what I mean? It's this very difficult situation because Russia are bombing from their country into the Ukraine. They invaded Ukraine in the first place. And they've had thousands and thousands and thousands of their own young people killed. Russia has. And some say he's lost a lot of support. He's uh, losing armory. People are not helping him out with it. He made a big mistake, I think. He was doing all right as a person. You know, and he's shot himself in the foot, I'd say. And he could still get out of it, but lots of people have died because of his invasion. He doesn't see it as invasion. He sees it as getting his land back, Russia land. But Ukraine have got a culture of their own. They were probably invaded by Russia in the first place years ago. <sighs> Wimbledon's finished. Djokovic lost again this year. Although he's got quite a few titles. Nine, I think. Um, he had knee surgery this year, though. So, and his, his knee was all strapped up. And he suffers badly with hay fever. Right, hold on a minute. Somebody come in. And put it on hold. Again, back on. Right, where was I? Tennis. Yeah. Tennis is over. Cricket's in full swing. Of course. Football's over. England lost, by the way. I don't think I've mentioned that yet. We got in the final again. Gary Southgate's retired from, well not retired, but he's stood down. He stood down, even though he'd brought the team a long way, and some say he should have carried on, because they were heading in the right direction. He's now going to throw them all out with a new manager. Um, so, they always get rid of the manager, don't they? Look at these lovely wildflowers, look. Just met one person on the walk with a little dog. Yeah. I wonder if we can walk down there. It might be 
Might be a change here. Let's have a look. It might be bumpier as well. What do you want to do? I'll go down here. It doesn't matter if it's bumpy. It's cooler. It's cooler than going out there. So England lost that. The women have qualified for the Euros for next year. We beat Sweden the other night. We have to mention the women. They have only really just started to be acknowledged, I think, by the sport community properly and the public. You know, there's still a lot of uh, work to be done for them to get equality, though, which they're still not getting, like, you know... It's it's a very always been a male dominated sport. People like me, we were never allowed to play it as children. Apart from in the field at the back where we lived, or in the alleyways. Well, once we got to school, no. Well, do you find sports? Boys, for example, never did netball, and they might have wanted to. How do we know? Girls tend to be netball, hockey, and. Yeah, that's about it. But no, you never saw a football in a woman a girls' school. Not like now. I'm going back, you know, like 60-odd years. Yeah, you know, and cricket, of course, taking off women's cricket's really in the swing. So it's summer sports. But, of course, the football season starts very soon. Um... They have a couple of warm-up games. I think Manchester City are playing Manchester United soon. <clears throat> Out friendlies, you know, I think. But, of course, um, so that's sort of bits that's going on in the world. Yeah, we had the general election and Labour won by a massive majority at last, after 14 years of Tory destruction. We are hoping that the NHS can be restored, how it was, education improved, and care in the community improved. These are things that the people want, you know, not just licking the asses of the rich, like the Tories do. Um, they do that to get the business. They get the business. But there's a few rich people vote Labour, actually. I think the Times, for the first time, support um, Labour now. <laughs> the Times. Uh, one of those old English institutions. <laughs> anyway, I'm rambling on a bit. Makes a very long video. Um, Zara's got a new dog. She hasn't... I think she's going to call him Red. He's, he's going to be called Red, I think. Little tiny puppy. He's a, a type of... He is a Jack Russell, but uh, mixed with some other type of Jack Russell. Um, but it's a, a, it is a, a breed, apparently. He's a dear little soul. He's really tiny. He's only about six weeks old. And they surprised me yesterday when... They Jodie knocked on my door. I, was, I didn't expect it. And she said, We've, you've got something to see you to see, Mum. And uh, so I went in. They'd been over to Wells to pick this little dog up. And, um... <sighs> yeah, they'd been over to Wells in the car to pick him up. So I've met him and cuddled him. Because and... Maggie's not even been cremated yet, by the way. Um, she's got to wait another... to Tuesday next week to be picked up. So it could be a fortnight. <sighs> But anyway, for Zara, she was very... Well, we were all upset, Zara gutted, not having a little spirit with her. Now she's got a new little spirit. And Maggie's happy with Brandy up in the spirit world. Is she? Yeah. Let's just have a look over there a minute. Oh, look at that big pipe coming through there. Look. I haven't really noticed that before. Let me take a picture of it. I've never seen it before, I don't think. Must be redirection of um, water or something. I've never seen that. Anyway, I've given you quite a good um, 
introduction to this walk and we've got a long way to go yet we're only skirting the hill fort at the moment well I did the hill fort this year I've been up on the top I've done several walks in Roborough but I haven't been over here for several months because I've been I was here in the winter probably the last time could have been when the leaves were just coming out oh yeah we're at a junction point now and now I'm going to turn off for a minute this is the junction point where you can turn off and follow the stream down through Roborough, go past the pink cottage. But we're carrying on, we're skirting the wood. But we could actually come back that way later. That's part of my plan to come back that way and then we'd have to repeat a bit of the journey. It's going to be a long day. What you can't do out here, by the way, that's why I've topped up quite a bit of fluids, you can't run out of water because um, once you're up on the area of outstanding natural beauty, there isn't anywhere to get water unless you diverted down to Burrington or you found a farm. There's nowhere to get water and this is going to be up to 30 degrees. It's 20 to 12 now. By the time we get to the area of Outstanding Beauty, it could be going on for one. It might be, uh, it might be less than that. And then we will be in shaded, there will be areas of shade where I'm going. Skirting with views of Burrington Coombe. Skirting the base of the area of Outstanding Beauty, which I like to do. This is on the way out. On the way back, we go up to the trig point and come back over the top. Right, that's when I definitely need my hat. Then we will come back into the warren. And then we'll decide which way to go. To come back. Um, but like I said, there is no rush. There's no bus. No rush, no bus. Oh, look, we've got a bit of negotiating to do here. Uh, yeah, so no rush, no bus, light evenings and warm weather with no rain. Right, I'm going to turn off for now, so I've got to negotiate this tree. Over and out. 